You've heard of Man Caves and Mom Caves. Now get ready for Pet Caves. The new series is coming to Crackle and Chicken Soup for the Soul this September. We've got the two hosts, Kayla Oliver, who is a pet behaviorist and celebrity design architect, Nina Ferrer. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having us. Yes, thank you. Kayla, let's go ahead and ask you first, um, as far as your pet, should they have a little something in every room or like one special space just to, you know, so that they can feel fabulous in that, in that particular space there? You know, I think that is so dependent on the house, right? And the family, you know, and the amount of space that you have to provide and the lifestyle that you're trying to live with your pet. Um, so for example, if you have a dog, you know, I personally have a dog bed in every room because I'm going to be in every room at some point, you know, my dogs are allowed there. Um, but if you have something, you know, maybe you have a bird, don't really know if you want your bird <laughs> in every space, right? You might want one dedicated space. So um, I think at the end of the day, it's totally dependent on what you want that relationship to look like, but making sure that you take the time to teach your pet what spaces are, are theirs. There's Anina, let's talk a little bit about the series. Tell us a little bit about, you know, what you're designing and, you know, a little bit about, you know, going to PetSmart and, you know, getting everything uh, ready for the uh, the reveal for these pets. So I think that the designs are meant for, um, in most cases, the animal, the, the what the animal is becoming, right? Because the people are coming to us and the animal has an issue and Kayla's resolving that issue. And then the room supports the growth for the animal, right? It's like a reward and the animal's growing into this new space. Um, it's wonderful that we had the opportunity to shop at PetSmart for every episode because they have such amazing products for the pets and they have a lot of stuff that can be used design-wise. Um, so we were very fortunate in that. And I just feel so honored that I got to design for so many pets. I mean, I deal with people, you know, and people have a lot of opinions and a lot of talking and these pets, they were just very grateful and happy. So <laughs> very good. <laughs> Perfect. Because when I heard about the, the, about the series, I was like, I already know about 50 people, you know, just in my first, you know, that I text that I was like, they would be perfect for the show. <laughs> You know what? Oh my goodness. Every time I tell somebody, they're like, oh my God, can I be on that? Can I do it? Yeah. I'm so excited. <laughs> and I just think that design is something that gets people excited and pet people love their pets. So like, it's just, it's such a happy marriage of two amazing things. <laughs> and I just, it's such a success already. All right. So let's go, let's go through dogs. Uh, let's do that first. And then we'll go through cats. Um, as far as a dog, you know, what should you do to give your pooch the star treatment? And, you know, Kayla, what's something that you try to incorporate? So I definitely think making sure they have a living space that they know is theirs, um, you know, which I think the show focused on a lot, whether that's a crate or a bed or a room, just an area, you know, that the pet can go and learn some healthy independence and separation. Um, I think that's super important, no matter what kind of pet you have, because, you know, in a big house or even a small house, they need a space that belongs to them. Um, from there, I think also a routine, you know, a lot of people focus on, you know, the tangible things that we need to provide our pets, but really it's, it's making sure that we set them up for success by spending time with them, being super clear about what our expectations are and having fun, you know, actually enjoying this relationship with them. So, you know, having a dedicated space, creating a routine that works for you and your lifestyle and then, you know, providing them with plenty of enrichment, I think is really important no matter what type of pet you have. You know, we're asking these pets to live with us in these domesticated environments. So it's really important that we provide their basic needs, you know, with things like toys, you know, mental stimulation, games, you know, things that will keep them active, keep them busy and keep their brains kind of working since, you know, they are living in a, in a house with us, which for most pets is not a natural, you know, instinct. That's something we have to set them up for. And then Nina, as far as designing, you know, obviously you have way more experience designing for, for our human counterparts, you know, versus the, the pets. But as far as like the changing the design at the exact same time, do you suggest if you're going to be making over, you know, a space for the pet that the adults and the humans also kind of change up their living space? It's kind of a good time to get a fresh start as well. Oh, yes. I mean, so one of the things that um, I think that we came to realize is that I think when people get a pet, um, they're thinking of, um, you know, they get the bag of food, they get the wee wee pads, and they're not thinking much further than that. But like, I have two children, and anybody who's bringing a baby home, they're overly prepared for like the next five years of that baby's life. They've got a car seat, they've got a stroller, they've got 10 strollers, they've got all these things. And I think that we have to start to think of bringing a pet into our home for the longevity. Like, what does it look like? 
for the first few months that we're training it and what does it grow into into in terms of design where does that pet grow into our home um, what does the space look like do we have the proper space um can we accommodate this pet like i have a bearded dragon and the poor little guy when we moved into our new home he was in a very small little enclosure and he was on the floor because we didn't we didn't know where we were going to put him and then he got the royal treatment, obviously, in an episode, and he's living better than most of us. So, you know, because we, we thought about it. Once you put some thought into where is this pet going in his life, you can put some thought into the design for the longevity. Is this the bearded dragon that we're going to see in the uh, in the series? Oh, yes, it is. Mr. <laughs> Tato, he is. Listen, I've had dogs my whole life. Um, I had I had Chachi, Nico, Little. And I've always had dogs, and they were stars in their own right, and people love dogs. But this guy... He is a celebrity. He gets so much attention. It is amazing. He is a star. <laughs> Let, let's go back to, to talking about cats. Uh, as far as people I know who have cats, I mean, that you, usually the cat becomes the homeowner because they kind of control everything. Uh, mm -hmm. Kayla, let's talk a little bit about, you know, designing for, for a cat. Um, well, I think cats, one thing most of us know about cats is they like to be perched. You know, they like to be high. They like to climb. They're very active. Even house cats, you know, go through a phase of really just whether it's climbing curtains or climbing on the back of the couch. You know, I think um, giving them room to express that natural instinct to want to be up higher um, is super important. You know, that's why cat towers and cat posts are so popular. Um, so I think I don't want to like talk too much about what you guys are going to see, but for the cats, I think Nina did a really good job of kind of, you know, knowing those things about cats as we talk to the family and then being able to provide a space for them that is perfect for them to do that. Um, the other thing with cats, as we know, they're so independent and they like to have places that are their own. They are the ones who are like, whether you give me a space or not, I'm going to go find my space to get, kind of separate and do my own thing. Um, and no matter the personality of a cat, I feel like that's true to cats in general. Um, so you'll see that, you know, we found lots of solutions for that um, with cats. I'm really, I really just don't want to talk too much about it. You know, he knows what yeah. I'm trying not to say. Like, <laughs> um, but, you know, I think with cats, it's, it's just, you're kind of right in the state where you said like they kind of own the house with dogs. You kind of need to like show them what it is that they need to be doing, you know, kind of show the way. And with cats, you kind of like take a back seat and figure out what they like and what they do. And then you kind of adjust to that. Um, so, you know, I think if, if you can live in, if you're a cat owner and you can live in that space of like, okay, I need to just kind of like let my cat do its thing so that I can figure them out. Uh, then you're already on the right track. There you go. And, and then final thing here, Nina, um, as far as, you know, maybe new pet owners, especially here in the, in the Midwest, the weather is really nice, but we're going to head, head into fall. A lot of more pets are going to be in, you know, especially our dogs are going to be indoors. Um, maybe something for the new pet owners or just a reminder for, you know, existing pet owners as far as something that they can do to make their pet uh, a little bit more comfortable in the indoors. I think from a design perspective, it's important to give something uh, to the pet that's theirs. So, if you're sitting in the living room, you have a dog bed. If you want the dog on the couch, you have a dog blanket that the dog sits on. So that then when, if you want to move the dog from that location to another location, you move the blanket and you're giving, you're, you're kind of setting up the rules. And I've learned a lot of these things from Kayla, but um, like in terms of like what the rules are in the training, but um, you want to take the training and the design kind of hand in hand. And you want to set yourself up to say, do I want the dog on the sofa? Do I want the dog in the living room? Do I want the dog in the bed? Make those decisions, and then you implement a design that works for that. So if you want the dog on the bed, then let's add a throw blanket that's just for the dog that you can remove, that you could put on. You want the dog in the kitchen with you when you're cooking? Let's maybe add a little dog um, area with a basket of toys, or maybe we're adding in there um, a dog bed. But we really have to think about I, I think about it the same way I think about my clients. How are you living? What is your lifestyle? We have to think about that for the pets. So for you guys in the Midwest, as the colder months come in, think about how you want to live with that pet this winter. And then let's pick out things that accommodate that lifestyle. That is awesome. Well, thank you both so much for your time today. Uh, you can go ahead and start catching the series on Chicken Soup for the Soul starting on September 1st and coming to Crackle on September 15th. Nina, Kayla, thank you so much for your time today. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.